Hey there, just a quick companion video for this whole uh, linear systems uh, thing we've done recently. I made an assumption uh, when going over the sparse matrix uh, solution code, and that assumption was that the solver in SciPy would look at the type of matrix that was being uh, uh, input and choose the solver appropriately to, to optimize the speed of the calculation. At least that's how MATLAB works, and I assume that's how SciPy works, but it does not. So I just wanted to do a very quick uh, video showing uh, SciPy's uh, banded solver, and uh, it should be quick again under five, five, ten minutes or so. So let's just uh, let's just do it. So I'm just going to use MATLAB just to do the uh, displaying part of things. Um, oftentimes, when dealing with these types of systems, you get matrices that look like this, and I've referred to these as sparse matrices, which which they are, of course. Uh, most of the elements are zero, but you notice that there's a lot of all the non-zero elements in this case um, is along the diagonal, the uh, diagonal that's immediately below it, and then in this case, I just made this up. This is like 10, 10 units above the main main diagonal. Um, <clears throat> these types of things are referred to as banded matrices, and they these show up over and over again when dealing with all sorts of systems like partial differential equations and other 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 things. So the matrix for our stock problem was like this. So there were <coughs> only non-zero entries on the main diagonal and the one directly below it. And if you recall the partial differential equation we did, there were, uh, there were non-zero entries on the main diagonal and the one immediately above or below it. So these are both banded matrices. In the uh, PDE case, it was a tri-diagonal matrix, and this one is just kind of a generic uh, banded matrix. So the way MATLAB works, if I were to actually try to solve this equation, um, I would type uh, x is equal to m backslash y, where y is the vector of knowns, and it would come up with my solution. Now, the nice thing about MATLAB is it looks at the structure of the matrix and kind of chooses the best algorithm uh, to, to solve the system. Uh, SciPy doesn't do that. So if we have a banded matrix, we need to explicitly call a banded solver. And um, so back in our Jupyter notebook, recall that the matrix we were dealing with had essentially minus ones everywhere except for the occasional one. And then this vector, which I called lambda plus one, that dealt with um, the lambda dealt with the percent change per uh, it, percent daily change in a stock price. And then we had our vector of knowns here. So this was the code that we used to solve it. Um, and we got our 10, 10 stock runs here. So I'm just going to basically show how to use the banded solver and just repurpose uh, some of this stuff here. So let's come down here and actually let's uh, look at the documentation for the banded solver. So this is the uh, banded solver documentation page and it takes a bunch of arguments, a tuple that tells you how many, uh, many non-zero diagonals are below the main diagonal. And the second entry of that will be the number above the diagonal. The AB matrix, which is just a way of coding up uh, the information we need to actually send to the solver, and then B in this case is our vector of knowns. So because this is a square matrix, our main diagonal is going to have, if it's an n by n matrix, our main diagonal is going to have as many elements, has n elements. And then, for example, the diagonal immediately above is going to have one element um, less than that. If we're two, element, two diagonals above, we'd have two elements less than that. Um, but the information we need uh, we, the information we need to send to the solver is such that they all need to be the same amount of length. So what this little schematic here shows, like if this row here were the main diagonal and this one were the diagonal immediately above, we would need to pad the first entry of this vector with a zero. Likewise, uh, for elements below, we would have to tack on um, zeros to it. So this would be the diagonal immediately below. We'd have to tack on one. This would be the diagonal two below. We'd have to tack on two zeros to the end. So let's come back here and let's create this. Um, we'll just repurpose this ones vector that we created because it's the same size. And now we need to create this vector here. So what I'm going to do is take, um, where did I create it here? My lambda vector and I'm going to create another vector called L, and that's going to be equal to lambda plus 1, and then I'm going to append um, 0 onto the end of that. So let's just print that out to make sure that looks okay. 
Yep, we have a zero at the end. So let's get rid of this. Now let's create what they called um, the AB matrix in this solver. So they called this AB. So I'm going to come back to my notebook. I'm going to say AB is equal to numpy dot v stack. And I'm going to pass in my main diagonal, which we called, remember, ones. And then my L vector. So the ones, do, ones vector is defined up here. Where is it? So this is the one that's all negative ones except for every couple entries that are a plus one. So let's just make sure this runs okay. And that's all we need. Uh, we've defined our vector of knowns up here. It is, um, where is it? It is y defined up here. So let's come down here and say x is equal to solve banded, which I imported um, from the imports. We need to pass in our a, b matrix and y. Oh, actually, the first element is the um, tuple that contains the non-zero um, elements. So that's just minus one. And we have no uh, non-zero elements below, above the main diagonal. Uh-oh. I need to close off that uh, tuple. And this is a, b, not a comma b. So I need a comma here. Oops, I'm used to... Um, building matrices where this negative refers to below, but we want the number below. So that number is actually one. There we go. So let's actually just copy our reshape and uh, plot commands from here. Paste them in. Uh, I don't want anything about timing now. So yeah, so you see it solves it and it's the same plot as here. Now the advantage is this code should run considerably faster than this. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put in my timing commands uh, in here. I'm gonna not record it just to save time. And uh, we'll bump up the number of simulations to like 100,000 and the number of days to 30. And we'll compare the, uh, the difference in speed. So let me do that off of uh, the recording. Okay, so I put in some timing code. I've come back up. Um, to here where we dealt with the sparse matrices and I have put the number of simulation days, where is it, to 100,000, 100,000 simulations and the number of days to 30. So this is an absolutely huge matrix. So, well, at least by uh, Jupyter Notebook standards. Let's run it and see how long it takes. So it's not too bad, three, three seconds. Let's come down here and try the banded solver. So you see here it's under a second, so obviously it's considerably faster than, uh, than above. Yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to, uh, for the sake of completeness, um, show this. So if you ever need to do these banded type systems, that's probably the way to go. Um, you get much better performance. So until next time, see ya.